Live life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Um, it was around 2018 that John and I kind of started feeling we'd worked for the last 10 years at Red Rocks Church and I'd ran a young adult ministry there and we had attended that church for 15 years, which is a really long time, and just felt this like holy discontent and felt this pull from the Lord and we felt you know kind of continuously and constantly like we were supposed to be building something new and we weren't a hundred percent sure what that was you know was it a church was it a ministry um and not only that though but we kind of felt that god was asking us for the first time ever to do ministry together and that was new for us um that was something that you know wasn't necessarily um, us both being on staff you know us both pursuing the same ministry that was new as well and so we stepped out in 2019 and joined Cherry Hills Church. We uh, learned there, we learned so much, went through a ton of training on church planting, on, on we learned a ton about the Holy Spirit. And, um, and it was, I think that year that we made a decision that serving God in His church and building His church was probably what we were going to do with the next, next phase of our lives. And so in early 2020, um, Late 2019, we named the church. In early 2020, we started the journey of planting One City Church. Our vision when we thought about One City Church, what we wanted it to be is we wanted it to be a place where people could find hope, where people could find purpose, where people could find family. Um, we wanted it to be a biblically sound church, but a church that was full of grace and full of mercy. We wanted it to be a place where the Holy Spirit was welcome. Um, we wanted it to be a place where um, people felt like, you know, if they didn't know God, they could feel comfortable enough to investigate God, where if maybe they felt like like, um, they never fit in at church or they were done with church. They could feel like maybe this church is a place that they could call home. Um, we wanted it to be a place for the next generation and where we lifted people into their next glory and into their next season of life. And so um, we wanted, you know, kids within our church to find the hope, purpose, um, the love of Jesus, right? The wonder of Jesus. Um, and we wanted it to be a place where people actually felt their life change, where they actually felt like that God was moving in them and um, they could see and have perspective of how God was moving in their life and and then in that way once those lives were changed we could change a city so Well, after much prayer and deliberation, we decided to plant One City Church in Denver, Colorado. And Denver is an awesome city and all of the surrounding suburbs. It's so fun. It's vibrant. It's full of good food, fun people, lots of activities, outdoor lifestyle, and more microbrews than anyone here knows what to do with. The median age in Denver is 31, so it's a young city. And the population growth here in Denver has outpaced the national average ever since. 1997. And according to statistics, this upcoming generation is the most unchurched generation of all time. But not only that, it is also the most spiritually open generation of all time. A generation full of people wanting to know God, yeah. but feeling like church doesn't apply to them. A city full of people that want to know God, but don't know God. That's our city. And then the pandemic hit. There was a ton of temptation for us to hit pause, to wait, and to not move forward. But we felt that the hope and purpose of God was needed now more than ever. And so in 2020, we pushed forward and we decided to launch One City Church in the middle of a pandemic.
And yeah, I think for us, we would say that in this last year, it has exceeded our expectations. I think it's exceeded all of it, One City's expectations of what we were able to do in the middle of such a trying year. Um, you know, I think first and foremost, we had the privilege of building one of the most incredible teams. Um, we have a team that has become family to us. Um, they are so kind, they are so focused, so talented, and um, so geared towards people knowing God and geared towards, you know, growing closer to God themselves. And so it's been a privilege getting to know these people and build One City Church with such an incredible group of people. What I love about One City is that it is just such a closely knitted community. Just getting to see everyone every week. Um, it's just like a family here and just getting to connect with everybody just feels so rejuvenated and refreshed every week, seeing my family. The sense of community and everyone coming together um, to bring, bring the Spirit of the Lord in. My favorite thing uh, being on the team at One City is just uh, working behind the scenes of with the work we can experience team, just getting to see people fully engaged, worship. Oh my, <laughs> um, I really enjoy the joy I get out of serving. What I love about serving on team is that it's like a community within a community, but we also get to come together under a similar mission and just grow the ministry and we're there for a purpose. Helping build the church up so that more people can get to know Jesus. Responding to the pastor's message and just seeing everybody just fully engaged and just what the Lord's doing here at One City and just taking outside and not being worried like what's going to go on. They're just so excited to take the words so applicable and take, the, take it with the ground running full speed. But also push each other further in our purpose and further in our one mission to grow the church and to build the kingdom. The vision I have for One City is just to continue to uh, grow in a family. Like we're just not building a team here, we're building a family just that everybody uh, continue to expand that um, circle that it just grows and more and that nobody feels excluded but everybody feels included in that. I, man, I've been praying about it so much. Um, my, my vision for One City is that more people will get to come to know Christ um, through our actions, through our presence and um, building the church, people coming into the church and like, what is going on in there? It's like, just come and see, you know? Uh, come and see what the Lord is doing and that He is good. The vision for One City is that it would just continue to be a place where people can come and create those um, relationships and grow closer because community is so important, but also that it would be a place where we can come um, get filled up with those connections and relationships, but then go out and serve the community and serve others and just bring people into that um, because one community is so important, but then what we do once we've been filled up is equally as important in that um, we would just continue to go out and serve and um, build up the kingdom. In August, we had wanted to launch uh, one group before we actually launched One City Church, and it ended up working out perfectly. We had incredible leaders that were going to lead our groups, and in August of 2020, we launched eight groups all throughout the Denver metro area. Um, we felt so strongly, you know, small groups are, are beautiful for a lot of reasons. They're wonderful because you get to learn about God together, right, and you get to grow in Christ together, um, but statistically, we knew that the largest influence um, on this current generation, on their faith is the faith and the influence of their peers. And so for us, it was a very high priority for people to have friends. Um, we have a very high value on people having friendships, on having um, friends that they get to talk to their doubt and talk with them about their doubts, about their hopes, about their dreams. And so um, could not be happier with what God's doing with One Groups. Then finally, in November of 2020, we launched One City Church, and it was kind of a crazy time to be launching a church. Uh, we made sure that we had so many online pieces in order. The team worked really, really hard to execute that very first service, and I think it went off without a hitch. It was just incredible. It was um, so faith-filled and so wonderful. And since launching, 
I've just been so grateful to God for the stories of life change for people who are finding God, um, the people who are finding a home, the people who are feeling seen for the first time in a really long time, the people who are moving out of loneliness and into community, the people who are moving out of darkness and into light. Um, we've gotten to celebrate our first baptism. We've gotten to celebrate um, people coming to Christ for the very first time. We've gotten to celebrate, um, you know, our very first Easter. I mean, um, I really couldn't have dreamt of how wonderful this journey has been, and we know that God um, is just getting started. Here at One City Church, one of our core values is, is generosity, and it's been our heart ever since we started and we launched the church that we would be a house of generosity. And so last year in 2020, and through our launch, um, we got to be generous, and it was fun. Um, we got to give to those who were on the front line during the pandemic, frontline workers. We also got to bring groceries to those who were less fortunate and provide meals, um, help those with, you know, housing, things like that, mortgages, paying their bills. Um, and then we also got to do $5,000 in relief funds and goods during the fires that occurred in Colorado last year. It was devastating. We had friends and family who were um, affected and, and it was our heart at One City Church that we were generous to come alongside all those people. And then over Christmas, we got to start a new tradition that we're yeah. so excited about. We did this thing called Thrill of Hope Boxes and we packed up a thousand of these boxes. We went to lower income neighborhoods in yeah. Denver and we got to bring them some essentials and then also have the opportunity to pray with them and to share the good news of the gospel. And it was such a powerful and yeah. special experience. Awesome. And probably one of our most favorite ministries that we got to do last year in 2020 was to serve the poor. And uh, we gave 10,000 as a church to ministries serving the poor and uh, being an outreach to those who are less fortunate, providing meals, food, um, clothing, all of that. And one of our most favorite that we got to be a part of was Kitchen One for One. I'm not even sure how this happened. Someone at Red Rocks said, you need to meet Chris Kilcullen, um, who headed up hospitality. And he's a really great guy. And you're going to love Chris and love his family. I grew up in the kitchen, worked in a couple of kitchens. And so when I started looking for an opportunity to serve at church, I was drawn to what's called the cafe team at Red Rocks Church. That grew. And eventually, we were doing two days a month plus all of the uh, volunteer food for all of our campuses. So we were serving 800 people on a Saturday. I wanted to buy a food truck and had no idea what I was doing at all. We got together, started talking. Uh, he had an idea for a food truck. Uh, I wanted to serve more people and we put those two passions together and Kitchen One for One was born. Kitchen One for One is, no pun intended, it's a vehicle that we are using to do two things. One is to serve uh, the homeless and to serve the impoverished. And the second thing is it's our platform to, to create opportunities to get other people involved and to create opportunities for other people to serve. We can't do this by ourselves. It's just too big for us to do alone. These are people that feel like they've been forgotten. And there's a lot of really great organizations that serve them uh, food on a consistent basis. Uh, but we wanted to do really excellent food. That's really kind of the, what separates us. Uh, we don't want to give them leftover food, day-old food, or just marginally cost-effective food. We want to give them food that, that you would buy, uh, that I would buy. And really, to do that in a way that just makes them feel truly loved, uh, that they're not leftovers. What we're trying to do is capture them in a moment where they're, they're comfortable, they're getting great food, they know they're loved, and they want to come back. But they wouldn't be able to come back if it wasn't for the volunteers 
and the work uh, primarily that Chris and Steve have put into this. Our big goal 12 months from now is we want to see the truck being utilized as many as seven days a week. There's a lot of people in this country that are one paycheck away from being homeless. Uh, there's a lot of people in this country that are working two and three jobs just to barely make ends meet. I would love to not take a dollar from anybody until they've served. I know that's probably not a practical reality, but um, I see volunteers getting oftentimes more out of this than some of the people we serve. The connectivity of that person's eyes is far greater than the benefit of a check. And uh, we need money, uh, we'll always need money, but I also believe we want people to give for the right reason relative to their other choices. Just serve one Saturday a month and dip your toe in the water. You know, the old saying, it's better to give than to receive. When you actually live it, you learn it, and, it, and it's amazing how it impacts your life. Food is what draws people together. When you come down and you see how a simple taco and that exchange of love just warms those people's hearts, I can promise you it will change your life. We could really use your help either at the prep kitchen or right there on the street serving alongside of us. This is not money that gets lost in some budget somewhere. If you've been blessed, feel called to help others, this is an incredibly transparent way to see your money be converted into tacos and feeding those in need. This last year, we couldn't imagine all that God did through One City Church, and we're just so thankful to God, and we're excited about what He wants to do this year through One City Church, and that's why we're excited you're here for Vision Builders Gala 2021.